Welcome to our review on purification and checking purity. So in one of our previous videos, we had a look to see how we could determine if a sample was pure from using its melting point. Now, we've also looked at this process of separating different substances using chromatography. And chromatography is another way that we can demonstrate the purity of a substance. So if we have a pure substance, then on your chromatogram, you will only have a single spot. If you've got more than one substance present, they each have their own spots on the chromatogram and therefore it would be an impure substance. Now, in our video that reviewed chromatography, we did talk about two key types, paper and thin layer. And what we now need to do is analyze which one is better. And the end result is that thin layer chromatography is better than paper chromatography for four key reasons. Firstly, it's faster. Secondly, it's more sensitive, which means we only need a small sample. Thirdly, we've got a larger range of stationary phases and solvents to choose from compared to the paper chromatography. And finally, we can actually take a single spot from our thin layer chromatography plate, and then we can analyze that using gas chromatography. So we can then identify exactly what it is through a further process. So in our review on chromatography, we mentioned these gas chromatograms. Now, what we actually generate on that computer screen are these series of peaks, as we said. But these can actually be used to analyze samples and compare them to standard references. So in this example here, what we've got is some wax from cabbage leaves in the modern day. And by taking a sample from an ancient cooking pot, we can compare them and see that actually that gives the same profile. So we can then say that in this ancient cooking pot, they were cooking cabbage leaves. So we can use this to unpick some mysteries of the past and reveal what was actually present. So it allows us to identify key things. So make sure that you can interpret these little chromatograms just by having a look at the peaks and matching them to references. The last thing we really need to consider here is how we actually choose the separation method we're going to use. So we've looked at a whole range of different techniques that we can use to separate substances, but we really need to think about what one would we use in any given situation. So you could very well get questions on the exam that ask you to select an appropriate separating technique. So if we've got a mixture that's got insoluble and soluble substances, then what we do is we dissolve it and then we'd filter it. If you have a solute dissolved in a solvent, it's going to be crystallization, first of all, to obtain our solute. And then we can then filter those off to get them from the solution. Or if we wanted to obtain the solvent, we'd have to carry out simple distillation. So think carefully about what it is you actually want. Is it the thing that's dissolved or is it the liquid that's done dissolving you want? Because that will determine your method there. If we've got two or more substances in the liquid state, that's going to be fractional distillation, which relies on the different boiling points. And if we have colored soluble substances, then we'll be using paper or thin layer chromatography. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that sometimes you may have to combine methods in order to separate everything out. So they could give you a more extended question where you've got, say, three different substances present and then you'd maybe need to combine two different techniques to do that. So think about the logical steps on which one should come first. So if you had something like uh, sugar dissolved in water with some sand, you start off by obviously doing the filtration process to get rid of the sand and separate that one off. And then you'd put it through the simple distillation to obtain the solvent. So obviously you've got those two processes but you'd have to do them the right way around to actually get all of the substances out. So hopefully at the end of this video, you do know the differences between thin layer and paper chromatography in terms of why thin layer is better. And you can also use chromatography to identify pure or impure substances. You should also now be able to identify which separation technique to use for different mixtures.